Hi, this is Kerry Garrison with Multicopter Warehouse. We're here at CES 2016 with John Resnick, the policy lead with DJI. Hi, Kerry. Thanks for having me. How you doing? Having a great show. Well, we're getting a lot of people here at the booth. It's a great time. Well, so right now in the DJI Go app, there are some no-fly zones. And why did DJI implement that? Well, originally we implemented the no-fly zones to keep people informed about airports. We've been doing geofencing for about almost three years now. We've kind of pioneered it. But be, by doing that, we've also gained a lot of experience about what how users use our aircraft. And what we one of the primary things we've learned that there are lots of people who are authorized to fly in restricted air, what areas that we considered restricted airspace. Like around airports and certain right. types of facilities. Exactly. I mean, a typical application, we're seeing a lot of people starting to use our drones and other drones for airliner inspections at airports. So we needed to find a way to allow people to fly in those restricted environments, but, but also enhance their, their information, what they know about the place, and create a kind of accountability trail. So we just released the beta version for our GEO system, and that's a geographic environment online. And that's a far more robust and flexible system now. You get a lot more information about the type of airspace you're in, whether there might be restrictions, whether you're near an airport, and it also allows you to then acknowledge that you know the airspace that you're in and acknowledge that you have your authorized user in that airspace. That information is stored in the cloud. So if anything should be happen, there's an accountability trail available. But most important, we see it as a real enhancement in keeping people educated, informed, while still allowing the flexibility for the myriad of great applications that we're seeing out there. Now, from what I understand the way it works is if I'm flying in one of these previous restricted areas, I can go in, say, unlock it, and then it's either going to ask me for my credit card information or be able to send me a text message for me to say that I'm a real person, and then it unlocks that location for 72 hours. Do I have it correct? Yeah, it will unlock it for 72 hours. And you're, yeah, essentially that's correct. We do require you to establish an account and you can use a credit card or a cell phone, but that's really all the information we collect and that's used to create that accountability trail. It's a good way of protecting people's privacy while still allowing for some access for proper authorities. Now this is gonna raise some questions in terms of the privacy of the people that are flying. How much information is DJI collecting on these flights? We're not collecting any flight information. Uh, now, as you know, our products have a pretty robust flight log available, and if a user wants to, they can upload that to the cloud so they can share flight log data with friends and things like that. But that's strictly the owner's operator's decision. We do not collect information from folks uh, about when they're flying, where they're flying, except for the going through that actual unlocking procedure. So it, it does keep track of when it was unlocked, the location it was unlocked, and does it store the person's name or the serial number of the aircraft or anything? No, all we have is the credit card number and or the cell phone number. So you, you do have a trail back to that person should the need arise? Correct. Okay, and when does this, this, you said this is in beta right now, when do you expect this to be rolled out uh, across the board and will it be optional or will it be really the replacement DJI Go app? It will be the replacement DJI Go app. Uh, you know, we'd like to get it out as soon as possible. We're getting a lot of positive feedback about it. Um, it's, it's a much better system, honestly. So we want to get it out there as quickly as we can. At the same time, that's why we're doing this public beta, because there is a lot more data involved with it. We want to make sure everything is working as well as possible. Excellent. So are we going to see that in sometime in the future or maybe within the next few weeks or months? I would certainly, we'd like to have it in, in this quarter and weeks would be great. Yeah. You know, that's why we're doing a beta, because we want to make sure it's good and it's right. Excellent. John, thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. I love you guys.